listening to Stephen Michaels. This is the Raiders Daily Podcast. How's it going, everyone? My name is Stephen Michaels. This is the Raiders Daily Podcast. All right, week three is in the books, and the Raiders win against the Miami Dolphins in Las Vegas, 31-28. to And a weird game and a bizarre game that, once again, a game that goes into overtime. I don't really think this game ever really should have been in overtime, but unfortunately, as you know, a lot of weird things happen, like Daniel Carlson missing an extra point. I mean, if he doesn't miss that extra point, guess what? That last touchdown Miami Dolphins get when they go for two in the fourth quarter... It doesn't matter if they go for a two. They would still be down a point and the game would have been over. But Daniel Carlson misses that extra point that came back to haunt the Raiders. That's why those extra points are really important. Very important. What was the most important play in this game? Without a doubt was the safety Casey Hayward Jr. getting. That was the biggest play in my opinion of the game it really created momentum for the Raiders because it wasn't looking good Derek Carr throws an interception really early in the game it, really bad interception uh some blame Foster Monroe I don't know I mean I it lo- wasn't a good pass in my opinion I think you got to see what your tight tight ends doing I don't think you can just throw <clears throat> not with those, not with that defense. And Derek Carr knows that, without a doubt, he knows that. So, either way, it was a bad pick six, and the Raiders were down fourteen to zero. And then, obviously, that safety came, and that helped out the Raiders. When the Raiders got that safety, it helped them. It gave them a little boost because in the second quarter, they scored ten unanswered points. So that definitely helped the momentum. For the Las Vegas Raiders. This was a game I did not expect to be close at all. And it's a game quite frankly. That when you look on paper. It doesn't look like it was supposed to be close. The Dolphins didn't do that much. This was more of a game of the Raiders. Shooting themselves in the foot. Over and over again. Stupid mental errors. I mean even things like. uh, Max Crosby. You know roughing the quarterback. Jacoby Bursett after a play. I mean that was a third down. The Raiders could have got off the field. Instead, it gives Miami, you know, a new set of downs, uh, apparently. By the way, I just got to say this real quick. These flags, every time someone touches a quarterback, as soon as they throw the football, they're getting a little insane. I could understand if it's like a, you know, someone's going for the knees or someone, you know, really lays a guy out. But just simply pushing the quarterback should not be a flag. I mean, you can't. What's next? Is the quarterback going to wear a red jersey? No touching the quarterback. It's just stupid. But let me tell you something. The Raiders, they played stupid a lot in this game. Even on defense, they played stupid. Which their defense, by the way, has looked... As you know, it is a completely different defense. They look a lot better than they have in... I don't know. Since forever, it seems. But Jacoby Brissett... I mean, this guy sucks, right? He went 32 for... 49. He had 259 yards, but I just don't think this, they didn't do anything. All their big plays came from either something dumb happening in the back end for the Raiders. It was all nonsense. He's not very good at all, yet the Raiders made Miami look like they're a lot better than they are. And that concerns me. When you play to the level of your competition, that's something the Raiders have been doing for years now it seems like I don't know 20 years they can't do that this was a game where the Raiders really should have just trounced Miami think about it Miami didn't do that much they really didn't the Raiders had a tough time covering their tight end a little bit uh Gusecki is is that his name um he had 10 catches for 86 yards and of course uh Gaskin he had 13 carries for 65 yards running the ball but that you know they sound like they got torch running the football. The Raiders, by the way, Barber had 23 carries for 111 yards. Now, <clears throat> obviously he had a couple big runs, which helped that. It didn't seem like he had over 100 yards. And the Raiders' offensive line definitely got to play better in the future. 
Uh, this Andre James and Derek Carr, the whole snap, this that that's become an issue now. This isn't just a one game thing. Andre James is he's got to get in sync with Carr here, or we're gonna have a lot of these passes. I don't know if you noticed, but I mean, one flies over Derek Carr's head, as you guys know. But if you go back and look, there could have been probably about 14 of those that went over his head. But Derek Carr has to pretty much jump up in the air, pop it off the air, catch it, and then throw it. Because Andre James is just floating him right over this dude's head. And let me that could turn out to be a disaster. We've seen that happen, what, two weeks ago. But that if this guy don't get in sync with Carr, if this guy can't figure that out and snaps it over his head, well, let's say when the Raiders really need it, they're on a in the fourth quarter and they're going up against the Chargers and then it's a game-winning drive and you have Andre James snap the ball over Carr's head and Chargers run it back for a touchdown. That's what I fear the most. That offensive line was very shaky against Miami. And again, I know Miami had a good defense last year, but this is a team that just got killed 35 to nothing last week. They're, I mean, they're playing, the Raiders are playing against Jacoby Brissett. This guy's terrible. The Raiders should have got, they, they should have been all over this guy. They really should have. I mean, they, they roughed him up. Don't get me wrong. Don't The Raiders definitely roughed him up. They got three sacks in this game. They were hitting Jacoby per set. But, I, I mean, I don't think really Miami should have scored any points in this game. They're not very good. They're really not. It's just the Raiders kind of let them be in the game. That's the only way I can really uh, break it down for you. Is the most simple way, anyways. The Raiders let Miami hang around. They let Miami, you know, they th- they turn the ball over. That's letting Miami do something. They let them they they let they let them off the hook too many times. Too many penalties and too many bad spots. Uh, there was a couple a couple plays uh, that a little sloppy tackling on the back end has to be clear, cleaned up. What I am worried about mostly out of this game those injuries. There were a lot of players who looked like they were banged up on a defense. We'll obviously get updates throughout the week. Hopefully they're fine for the next game. Because as you know, the next game is a big one. It's the Raiders versus the Chargers on Monday Night Football. This game is huge for the AFC West. Just yesterday, as the Raiders won, so did the Chargers as they go into Kansas City, into Arrowhead, and they beat the Chiefs. So now the Chiefs, they have two losses. The Chargers have one loss, and guess what? The Broncos are undefeated. I still say they're they're highly, highly overrated. I still say uh, they're the worst undefeated team. But I will say this about the Broncos. When they play bad teams, at least they're smoking them out. I mean, they played against the Jets, and Jets went scoreless. That's kind of what the Raiders should have did against Miami. But instead, it was a dogfight. Maybe, just maybe... The Raiders overlooked Miami and played to, like I said, down to the level of the opponent's capabilities. You know, they played down to their level. Because the, the Raiders, they looked real shaky to start this game. They really did. They didn't really ramp things up, in my opinion, until the second half. The Raiders are a second half team. They've shown this all season long. And listen, uh, one thing you can you can't say bad about Derek Carr is when it's clutch time, usually, I mean, I would say nine times out of ten, when the Raiders need a, let's say, a field goal to win the game or a touchdown to win the game, and Derek Carr has the ball in his hands, I trust him more than I trust a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL. He is clutch when it comes to that. So that's something that you can never knock on Carr. Now, you can knock on him for some decisions he makes throughout the game, uh, maybe protecting the ball when he's, you know, in the pocket, all that kind of shit. But you can't really question that he's not clutch when it counts, because he's always been. But the problem is, all these games shouldn't come down to that. He shouldn't even be in that, that, you know, that kind of space when you're, 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 you're down, you got to come back and win every game. Not every game should be a nail-biter. Not every game should come down to a last-second field goal or go into overtime. Sometimes the Raiders just have to come out and blow these teams out. I thought they would do that against Miami, but like I said, the Raiders just made too many mistakes in this game and let Miami hang around. They let them hang around. 
You know, and there's no other way really to to put it, other than the Raiders simply let them hang around this football game, and the Raiders had plenty of opportunities, plenty of opportunities, you know, to put this Miami team away. You think about early in the fourth or in the fourth quarter, Raiders had a two opportunities, two drives where John Gruden, in my opinion, was way too conservative, and, and they punted the football away. They ran it, ran it, ran it. I mean, it was so predictable, the play calling. He, you got to mix things up in there. I, just last week, you know, he threw a... Instead of running the ball, what did he do? He threw a big bomb and it worked. The Raiders didn't do that this game. Instead, they just tried running the clock out, which was a bad idea. I think if the Raiders were a little bit more aggressive there in the fourth quarter, they could have just ended it. Because Miami, especially in the fourth quarter... Their defense was tired. Brian Edwards was starting to emerge. And he, they, Raiders got to start using that guy more too, by the way. You could tell that the momentum was on the Raiders' side. And I think they could have put the nail in the coffin early in the fourth quarter. But, you know, like I said, things kept happening that kept Miami around in this game. Like when Daniel Carlson misses an extra point, that keeps them around. You know, it does keep them around in the game. But, um... So yeah, so the like I said, the defense they played well, definitely. Um, they allowed, I believe, four point two yards per play, and three hundred and thirty total yards, and they pretty much yeah they held the Dolphins to no no points at all in the second and third quarter. So that was good, but you know they also struggled sometimes. We all know that um, Miami scored on three of his four possessions in the fourth quarter and overtime. So that's where the Raiders' defense got to step up. You know how I was just talking about Derek Carr being clutch in the fourth quarter? The Raiders' defense needs to start being clutch in the fourth quarter. And they have been, you know, obviously in week one, week two, they're good. But we need that consistently. Consistently. Um, So we'll see. But uh, the Raiders, they did... Uh, they allowed conversions on three of nine third downs during that stretch, by the way, when they allowed them to get all those four possessions in the fourth quarter. Well, three, to four, three of the four possessions in the fourth quarter, they scored on. And the Raiders allowed. You know, it's just awful, awful, awful play by the Raiders there. So anyways, yeah, so it really came down to this. I mean, uh... Denzel Perryman missed the big, big tackle on Jacoby Brissett. It was fourth and one. There was just a couple of seconds left in the game. And Denzel Perryman was, I mean, he had J- Jacoby Brissett dead to rights. But he juked him. And he got a one-yard touchdown run that led to the uh, two po- led to the Dolphins going for two. And they got the two-point conversion. Which, again... Very frustrating. You want the Raiders' defense to come through at that moment. You want the Raiders' defense to just to shut that down. Boom. I mean, you let up the touchdown, which really, like I said, it was fourth and one. It wasn't like it was third down. It was fourth and one. And Denzel Perryman had this dude. Like, it was over. And he just missed the tackle, man. He got juked right out. And... Then, you know, they go for two points here, and this is a time when the Raiders' defense needs to step up, but nope. He ended up extending the play, and boom. he They get it. They get two-point conversion. So, uh, you know, that, that's on the Raiders' defense right there. It really is. But so, and then if you remember, too, um, on fourth and 20 in overtime, uh, Jacoby Brissett had a play where he found... Um, Mike uh, Gusecki, is that his name? It was a 27-yard pass that pretty much led to a field goal to tie the game at 28 in overtime. Again, this was a broken-down play, which, you know, there's no reason why. Brissett was running all around. This guy's not that fast. The Raiders' defense have to, has to get after him and take him down. They can't let Jacoby Brissett do that to him. What are they going to do when they play against... You know, Patrick Mahomes or Justin Herbert, a really good quarterback. So, you know, both, you know, they both teams 
hit a field goal there, goes into overtime, and obviously the Raiders uh, end up winning the game. But they got to get better. You know, they do got to get better. You know, they, they did only hold, they managed to hold Dolphins only to a field goal in overtime, obviously. that That's good, obviously. But, you know, they have to get better. They do. Even though the defense looks so much better than they did last season, they still have to work on things. And the offense, the same thing. Even though the Raiders won this game, and like I always say, a win is a win, it did show some signs in this Raiders team of weakness. And the Raiders have to really work on that this week with this big game coming up. I think they're going to be fine, to be honest with you. I think this is stuff they can clean up. I think some of this stuff is honestly just looking past the Dolphins. I really do. I, I know that's weird to say and it sounds like something that couldn't happen. You would think a team like the Raiders who've seen them, you know, come on, they, they were 6-3 and three two years in a row and collapsed, would not let that happen. But, yeah, I think they were. You know, I think that might have been part of it. Uh, but anyways... And also the penalties. It hurt the Raiders, like I mentioned. Eight penalties, by the way, 104 yards. So that's just insane right there. Insane. You can't have that. I mean, just dumb penalties, too. They're all just stupid, stupid penalties. But at the end of the day, the Raiders, you know, they're 8 for 15 on third downs, by the way. I wish they could get, you know, maybe 10 for 15 or something. Maybe 11 for 15. A little better there. But they were better than the Dolphins. Like I said, this game, it never felt like it should be close. It just never felt like that. Total yards, all right? Total yards for the game. Miami had 330, and most of those came off big plays. The Raiders had almost 500 with 497 yards. You know, yards per play, just yards per play on offense. Miami was only averaging 4.2 yards. The Raiders were averaging 6.1 and like I said, with passing yards, you know, 197 to 357. So it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that this game was even that close. But Raiders let it be that close. They didn't put them down. And they struggled early. So they had to play catch up. And then, like I said, they had a lot of wasted possessions. They definitely didn't play their best football. But here is the best the silver lining of this all. You know, I can go through all of their stats and tell you, you know, who, you know, everyone's stats. Derek Carr obviously had two touchdowns, had an interception, though. Uh, he threw for 386 yards. He threw for a lot of yards. Like I said, uh, Peyton Barber went over 100 yards. There's a lot of bright spots that happened in this game. Brian Edwards with those three catches he had. Yeah, I believe he had 89 yards. Henry Ruggs had four catches in this game. He had 78 yards. Hunter Renfro keeps being clutch, by the way. Five catches, 77 yards. Darren Waller, kind of a quiet day for him. You know, uh, he had seven targets, but he only had five catches for 54 yards. Miami was trying to take him away, but, you know, I don't know. I've seen some plays there. I, I Looking back on the... the game where Darren Waller definitely got open. But, you know, Derek Carr in this game had to get the ball out of his hands fast. I don't know if you guys noticed. Because they're in a shotgun. You have a guy snapping a ball almost over, over your head every single play. By the time you get the ball down and you're positioning the ball, their offensive line is not the greatest. So you already have someone in your face. So you have to make a quick decision. A quick decision. And I think that's how that interception happened in the first quarter. But that's just the reality of it. I mean, this offensive line has to start playing better. John Gruden even alluded to this at the after the game, talking about his tackles running into each other on some of these plays. They got to get better. They really do. If they think that's a tough task, the Miami Dolphins, wait till they play some of these dominant teams. You know, I mean, listen, Bosa's coming. The Chargers are coming. The, this offensive line needs to get their act together and protect. And remember, this week, Jalen Richard will be eligible to play against the Chargers. We'll see if, if he does. We'll see what happens with that whole thing. Um, I didn't know if this guy would even be in the roster right now. If you, I really thought he would be released. But now, 
even if they wanted to release them, because they probably didn't, you wouldn't want to release someone who's on injury uh, reserve because then you have to do an injury settlement and all that nonsense. So even if they say, okay, he's healthy, they can't cut him right now. They're going to have to pay him the $3 million or whatever he's going to make to beat a third running back. Because right now, Josh Jacobs with this toe injury, turf toe, and then the ankle, you don't know how. He's not going to be 100%. Even if he did play against the Chargers, he's not going to be 100%. This is going to be an injury. I think it's going to last. They're going to linger for a little while. So you definitely need another running back. You already have Jalen Richard. He already knows the playbook. Hopefully he can get better vision. Hopefully he's better than he was last season. But either way, another running back in the mix will help. Drake is not a workhorse running back. He's not that type. That's why Barber got you know so many carries. Barber did go over 100 yards. That's good. But I think throwing Jalen Richard in there too... That will make up for not having Josh Jacobs. Not entirely, but still having three, you know, good running backs, I think, will definitely help the Raiders against the Chargers and, you know, whoever team they face going down the line until Jacobs is fully healthy. Fully, fully healthy. But right now, the good news is the Raiders are 3-0. and And they have not been 3-0 and in a long time. So this is something that you guys should be ecstatic about. Yes, it was ugly. There's no doubt about it. 31-28, never should have been close. Like I said, stupid mistakes, people missing extra points. A lot of dumb shenanigans happen. But what did this team do when it mattered? They won. And what's the only thing that matters in the National Football League? Winning. So, yes, the game was close. Way too close for my, for, for me anyways. But they won. So, I don't really care. On Mondays, I don't care. As long as I see the win and the winning column, the only thing that matters to me. I w- but I do doing a show, so obviously I'm going to point out some of the flaws, obviously, because I'm doing a podcast. But if I'm you at home, I don't give a shit because the Raiders won and there's a big game coming this Monday night. This game, if the Raiders can beat the Chargers and go to 4-0, this game could turn the tide for this organization. That's how big this game is going to be on Monday night. If they can get a win over the Chargers, that will give them momentum. And then after that, they have a few easy games. No game's easy, apparently. But a few teams that they should be able to beat. This team could go on a little run here. You know? But it's all going to start with... We're really going to get tested against the Chargers. We're going to see how good this Raiders team is. AFC West battle... This is a battle for first place, by the way. The Raiders need to dominate. They already own the L.A. market. The Raider Nation needs to go to SoFi Stadium and take it over. And the Raiders need to take it over and just smash the Chargers. They need to beat the Chargers. That's going to be the big game. They got through the trap game against Miami. Now it's time for prime time. Now it's time for the Raiders to show the world that they are for real. The only way to do that is to beat the Chargers on Monday Night Football. We will see if they can do it, and we will talk about it after that game is complete. All right, guys, so that is it for me. I will see you guys next week with a a public podcast show. Um, And uh, you might see a Just Win show out pretty soon, one more public one. So enjoy those. I will see you later. My name is Stephen Michaels. This is the Raiders Daily.